so how are we going to feed 9 billion people by 2050? It's one of the largest questions being talked about in the agricultural sector today, and indeed in the good food movement. Experts estimate that we're going to have to grow about 60% more food to hit those 2050 targets. And that's leading to a push toward producing more. More food, more crops, more land, more resources, bigger and better seeds, more, more, more. But are we missing the point? Are we perhaps asking the wrong question? What if we could just throw away less, waste less? Could that go toward meeting that 2050 target? The data suggests perhaps that's true. It's estimated that about half the food we grow in the United States is thrown away. And globally, that number is even higher. Now, in the developing world, it's largely due to systemic issues of infrastructure, inefficient harvesting, lack of coal storage, lack of transportation. And then in the industrialized, developed world, a lot of that waste is due to just the consumer. There's too much of it. We're throwing it away. There's other inefficiencies. A lot of it due to cosmetic reasons. So what if we could just change this paradigm and instead of trying to turn our food system completely inside out to meet these goals, what if we just started throwing away less? The statistics are actually pretty sobering. We throw away an astonishing amount of food, 4 billion tons annually. And there's an economic impact to that as well, $43 billion worth. So rest assured, that wastage of food is factored into the cost of food. It's factored into the profit and loss statements of retailers, food service providers, distributors, and ultimately us as consumers, we're paying more. So not only is this a staggering waste of resources, but if we actually just threw away less, food might actually be cheaper, and we might actually be able to get it to more and more people. So let's take a look at the typical supply chain in the United States. Let's take lettuce, for instance. 98% of lettuce in this country is grown in two states, California and Arizona. And farmers in that area leave about 20% of the lettuce that they grow unharvested and unsold and spoiled in the field. That's largely for cosmetic reasons. The head of lettuce is too big, weighs too much, too little, slightly blemished, might have tip burn. It doesn't even make it onto a truck to get out of California or Arizona. The other 80% that does make it, it goes to a co-packing facility where it's washed and processed and packaged, then it's sold to perhaps a wholesaler, then a distributor, and it makes its way across the country to get to us here in New York. So along that supply chain, the product degrades, we use fossil fuels along the way, and we ultimately get a less nutritious product right here in New York. Once it actually hits the retail shelf, it's lost half of its shelf life. So instead of being about 14 days, it's about seven days. So the retailer is gonna throw about 10% of away because it can't move through it fast enough. And then it's gonna get to you, the consumer, right? And then what are the, what's the likelihood that you're gonna eat all of it? It's probably gonna wilt or turn a little slimy before you can finish it. Then it goes into a landfill. And if it goes into a landfill, it's probably gonna decompose and release methane. And methane has a 26 times the capacity for heat trapping gases compared to carbon dioxide. It's way more lethal. So agriculture has this enormous impact on the natural world. It's the largest consumer of land on the planet. It's the largest consumer of fresh water. Approximately 75% of the world's fresh water withdrawals go toward agriculture. It's the leading cause of global water pollution, and it's responsible for about 15% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So not only is this whole process, this whole supply chain, this whole system very wasteful, but it also has an enormous impact on our planet. Now, not to mention those two states where we're growing all that lettuce also happens to be in decades and decades of drought. Now, there's a lot of global leadership around this issue, which is a good thing. Here in the United States, we're a little bit behind. For instance, the European Parliament passed a resolution in 2012 mandating that 50% of food waste is reduced by 2020. In the UK alone, thanks to government efforts, a public sector awareness campaign, activism, and retailer involvement, food waste has dropped 18% in the last five years. This is a global issue. Another sobering statistic, all the food that we waste in the industrialized world in a given year is equivalent to all the food that's produced in sub-Saharan Africa in one year. Very, very sobering stuff. And Honestly, this is, not, this is pretty low-hanging fruit, pun intended. If we can just reduce 
15% of the food that we throw away, that's 25 million more Americans that get food. And one in six households in this country is food insecure. So this, this whole system, besides being incredibly wasteful, also just demonstrates a callous disregard for the food insecure. The good news is, is that even in the United States, a movement is afoot to address this issue. There's dozens of startups that are investor-backed, that are getting media attention, that are trying to, in some way, shape, or form, market and sell slightly cosmetically blemished produce. These companies are all over the place. They're juicing, they're selling imperfect produce or ugly greens, and they're starting to get mainstream media attention as well. Thanks to great research papers put out by the NRDC and others, this is slowly but surely starting to get a little bit of mainstream attention, which is much, much needed. We have celebrity chefs getting behind this. We have um, all kinds of influencers that are starting to pay attention to this space. And perhaps most encouraging, we're seeing large retail chains that are starting to dip their toe cautiously into this issue. Now, the retailers probably can make the largest impact. Our entire retail food system today is designed for merchandising and marketing. Walk into any grocery store and look at their produce department. Overabundant supply, huge displays of produce. A lot of that is wasted. On top of that, we've got other systemic issues in the retail sector that cause food waste. Arbitrary enjoy by dates, sell by dates, use by dates. What do these all mean? There's no consistency. So the fact that retailers are getting involved in this and are slowly starting to address the issue and support companies and trying to promote ugly produce or cosmetically challenged produce is a very good sign. Perhaps the link that bears the biggest brunt of this in the whole supply chain is the farmer. Six billion pounds of fresh fruit and vegetable in the United States were left unharvested and unsold at the farm itself. That's about 20% of what a farmer grows. It just rots in the field. So farmers are slowly trying to market ugly produce, trying to work with their retail customers, trying to work with industrial food service providers to try to find a home for some of this produce. Some of them are trying to compost it. They're trying to create anaerobic digesters to produce energy on their farms with this wasted product. The company that I co-founded, Gotham Greens, we're a sustainable urban agriculture company. We're trying to play a small role in disrupting this conventional supply chain of produce. What we do is we develop and operate commercial scale greenhouse facilities in urban areas for fresh vegetable production. We use a fraction of the land compared to conventional farming, fraction of the water. We recycle all of our irrigation water. We use renewable electricity and we produce good, dozens and dozens of good paying living wage jobs in inner city areas that have a need for <clears throat> job creation. So growing in very close proximity to a large urban marketplace, we're able to cut out that entire supply chain. We're able to get fresh, nutritious product to customers within 24 hours. So this is not going to solve all of our issues you know, toward making our food system more sustainable, but it can play a small role. Another initiative that we launched recently, which we're super proud of, is Ugly Greens. So even in our highly controlled, technologically advanced, climate-controlled greenhouses, our highly pampered greens do get sometimes a little blemished and bruised in the harvesting and processing process. So rather than throw it away or compost it or enjoy it during staff meals, we have decided to package it and sell it at a very steep discount while trying to shed some light on this issue of food waste. The good news is, is that you as consumers can do a lot to address this issue. A lot of this is through consumer behavior that we can change. Simple things like buying local, supporting local, shortening that supply chain, doing more with scraps, using meat leftovers and seafood leftovers to make stock. Uh, slightly wilted produce can be plunged into cold water to give it a little bit more life. We can freeze more. We can help to lobby our elected officials for more composting. There's only two cities in the United States that have mandatory food composting programs. That's San Francisco and Seattle. Former Mayor Bloomberg passed a resolution in New York City to make food composting mandatory by 2020, so hopefully that happens. And you can just compost more and keep it out of the landfill. So there's a number of things that we can do as consumers to address this issue of food waste. And coming back to that 9 billion person target, 2050, can we do it? The data suggests that we can. So I encourage you all to join the movement, and let's stop throwing our future away. Mm.